Hi everyone, thanks for your patience um, and a big thank you to Bethany for joining us this evening. Um, we will kick off. Anton, if we start with you, if that's okay? Yeah. Yeah. Nancy. You're right. Um, what an eventful tournament. So much we could ask you today, you probably would have asked me. But um, let, let's start obviously with Lauren James. Look, we all, we've seen the statement, we just want to know how she is in and around the squad right now. Yeah, she's doing good. Obviously, she's disappointed <coughs> with what happened on the day and it was a a split second emotional moment that happened but we we've got round her obviously it's good that she's acknowledged that and she's put her apology out and now we just wait to see what FIFA do and we just move on from it now yeah that wait does that seem a little cruel despite the fact that you know obviously as a team you're waiting to find out whether you can have one of your most important players but also personally she's waiting to find out whether she'll play at this tournament yeah obviously I can imagine it's a very difficult position for her to be in but whether they did it on the same day or not, it's not going to affect us in a way that we're not defined by one player. I think it's important that everyone's there for her and that we are there for her as a team and as coaching staff. But ultimately, whatever decision they make, we have to unfortunately accept that and just get on with the game. Those bigger things than just focusing on one player right now. How is everybody considering that night on Monday was brutal for the fans, what they can only imagine for the players. It must have been anguish at times. Um, mentality is the word that seems to be coming up that you're all talking about but how much are you wanting to prove more than just mentality going into this game? Yeah, obviously it's part and parcel of the game there's a lot of it is mentality, a lot of it is resilience a lot of it is the physical aspect which you've seen a lot of players had to go and play 120 minutes which is not easy against such a tough opposition um, so I think it's just a case of now we're just glad to be we had a good day's rest yesterday so we can regroup again we got back on the training pitch and we can just focus on our game on Saturday because I think we can talk about resilience and mentality in all these ways, but that's tournament football. There's a lot of experienced players in this group that's used to having to do that, and there's a lot of girls that are... It's their first tournament as well, so they're having to get used to it. So it's a fine balance, but I think the girls are in good spirits, and like I say, we can't, get, we can't, we can't be more excited to get going again on Saturday. Talk about the team, but if you had to say moments, just take for yourself and say, World Cup? What a final. This must feel pretty special. Yeah, I mean, look, it's an amazing feeling to be going into another stage of this tournament. I think, ultimately, we want to just keep pushing as far as we can in this tournament. And the fact that we've managed to get past that hurdle is a big, a big thing for us. And um, I think we're going to face another different challenge. We've had all sorts of challenges this tournament. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. And we're, we're all very much looking forward to playing in that quarterfinal come Saturday. Thanks, Anton. We'll go to Jane at BBT. Um, had your practice taking penalties, and can you kind of talk us through the pressure that you were feeling as you were walking up? <laughs> to be honest, I think I'm more nervous now in front of you lot than I was the penalty. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think obviously we're always prepared for these situations. It's tournament football. We know it can happen. So there's an element of practice and preparation behind the scenes that goes into that. Um, but for myself, I think I'd a slight brief moment of, God, is this really happening? Am I actually going to do this? But um, the walk-up was absolutely fine. It was, it was quite silent, weirdly. I thought for my first penalty shootout, I would have heard all the noise in the crowd, and, and that break was just all I was focusing on was the ball and that goal, and uh, luckily it went in. Um, looking ahead to Saturday, um, obviously there's been a lot of surprises in this World Cup, including Colombia beating Germany. Are you viewing them as quite a dangerous team? Yeah, I think, look, any team in this tournament can't be underestimated. We've seen teams knock out big, bigger teams or expected teams to get through, so I think anything can happen. And I think for us, they've shown their brilliance. They've shown that they can take out big teams. Um, they've got some key quality players, so I think it's as, as much as we can nullify their threats as possible and do the job that we know that we can, um, we should hopefully have a good game. I'm sure you saw that the friendly against Ireland was abandoned after 20 minutes before the tournament even started. What's been yours and the squad's reaction to that? Yeah, there was obviously a lot of talk on that at the time, but there's, we've also seen them in tournament now and no game's been abandoned yet, so I think it's fair to say that there's two teams playing in a game of football and it's down to the referee's discretion on how many cards they want to give or how they feel the safety of the players. So ultimately, I hope it's just a good game for everyone as a spectator and as players to be a part of and that none of that seems to happen and doesn't get abandoned. Thank you. We'll take questions from the floor. We'll go to Emma. Hi, Beth. Nice Thanks. to speak to you. Right. 
Um, we've obviously seen a couple of low-scoring matches from England so far. I know that everyone's been asked about this, but I just wonder from your perspective, you've obviously come on, made a couple of substitute appearances and looked really sharp. Do you think that you're sort of due now a start to prove, prove, your, prove yourself as a goal scorer? Oh, million dollar question. Um, look, ultimately, Serena's the boss. Um, I'm here to be a part of the team, whatever role that is expected of me, whether it is starting or as a sub. Um, I love playing football. I want to play as much football as I can at this tournament. So ultimately, if I get the minutes, I'll try and do everything I can when I'm on the pitch. And if I don't, I'll be there to be the number one fan for the girls that are on the pitch. Thanks, Bear. Yes. I think there's probably a sense, maybe at the start of the tournament, that you might be, as a, uh, perhaps a surprise call it, you were just happy to be here. Does that change when you arrive at a tournament and you have the chance to start, especially when England aren't scoring many goals? I wouldn't say I'm just happy to be here. I think I've fought quite hard to get my place on that plane. Um, and I wouldn't say it was just a case of luck. And I think for me, there's an opportunity where we can go and do great things at this tournament. And we've got an excellent group of players. And also, also in the forward position, we've got some excellent forwards who have been scoring good goals as well. So competition's high, which is not a bad thing because it doesn't lead for any complacency. And I think for me, I, all I can do is show up to training every day, push as hard as I can. And if that requires that I get a start, then great. And if it doesn't, then I'm there for the girls no matter what. Thanks, Daniel. Just go to Tom behind you. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Beth. Um, I just wanted to, have you spoken as a team about the atmosphere that the Columbia fans are going to bring and, and it, it being a bit different maybe to what you've had so far in this tournament? And are there any things that you can do to kind of prepare for that psychology or, or mental side of the contest uh, coming up on Saturday? Um, not so much, really. I think we all know that Columbia have got a great following and they're going to bring some good noise to the stadium. I think that's great for any football game, a bit of noise, bring a bit of atmosphere. I think, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen on the day and hopefully we've got enough fans there supporting us as well. But, yeah, hopefully they just decide that they just realise that it's a game for both teams to be there to win. And, um, yeah, it's just a friendly game for everyone. And whether it does get rowdy, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with that. Thanks, Tom. We'll go across the room to Sandra. You've not got more than one mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bethany. Yeah. Um, your, your, or half the time through your game with Columbia will coincide with uh, the... Premier League re restarting, but obviously with England's first game here at the World Cup, you had higher viewing figures than you did at the um, opening game for the Euros. Just how important is it to just maintain, you know, th that you know that you've got that support back home that's going to keep going through whilst this other uh, league season starts? <laughs> Deal with that, that. Yeah, no, I think um, it's it's important that we keep it. I think as we've seen over the last few years and since the Euros especially, the amount of numbers has grown in the women's game and people's interest in viewing numbers. Um, I think hopefully we can still engage the fans enough to want to watch us. I know there's a lot of people that have turned to women's football because they've enjoyed watching us. It's not just because the men aren't playing. So hopefully we can continue that because we want to make sure that there's viewing numbers as high as possible. Whether they choose to watch the men's game or not, that we can't affect that. I think ultimately we're going to go and try and put out our best performance and give the fans something to watch and that they'll want to keep coming back and watching us. Thanks, Sandra. We'll go to Good Morning Britain in the middle of the room. Oh, hi. Um, so, obviously, there's been a lot of chat about Colombia's physical approach to the game. Um, what would you say is, is the biggest worry for the team and in the, within the camp ahead of Saturday? Look, every game's physical in its own way. I think, like I said before, um, if it gets too physical, I'm sure the referees will step in when it comes into regards to safety of players. Um, but ultimately... I just think it's the case, the biggest danger is just not to underestimate them. Like I said, they knocked out Germany, or they beat Germany, should I say, who's one of the biggest teams in this tournament. So I think we just have to make sure we approach it in a good manner, knowing that they can be physical. We can also be physical and match that. And I think it's just going to be important that we don't get too into a, more of a fight than actually playing football, because that's what we're here to do. We're here to play the game that we love and hopefully do it in a good, stylish way as well. And obviously, you were all in this amazing setting. I, mean, I was um, outside for work, and it was fantastic to be near the beach. But I can imagine it is highly stressful. I'm just curious, um, how are you and the players sort of keeping the stress at bay? Yeah, I mean, when you look outside your room and you've got a lovely beach and sea view, it's really nice, I must say. Um, it's nice to 
just go out and even if it's just to go for walks and clear the head a lot of the girls here like going out for walks and getting coffee so I think it's look it's just about keeping your head cool and uh, if you need the time and space to go and wander off a little bit you can um, but equally that's part of being a footballer and the pressures that come with it in tournament football that your mentality states remains where you're ready to go at any given point. Thanks we'll go to Molly next year thank you. Hey, Hi. Um, firstly, can I just kept check everyone's fit and healthy after, obviously, the, the extra time and Chloe's got a little bit of a headache, is everyone okay in camp? Yeah, everyone's fine as far as I'm aware, but um, we all get a headache, so yeah, I'm sure that'll clear up in no time. And obviously, you've, you've had to wait a little while to, to get your chance at a major tournament. What, what was it like to, to finally get that, and did it mean a little bit more in a way to, to kind of see... Everyone on the bench this time, like we were speaking to Neve, and she maybe hadn't got a chance, and then she come on, she got her minutes. What, what does it give something a little bit extra to the squad when you see everyone get that kind of moment? Yeah, obviously I was in that situation last summer where I didn't play, and it was tough. Um, but for me, this tournament has been very much different, and it's been an amazing feeling and a very proud moment for me to have been able to have stepped onto the pitch for my national team in a major tournament. And I think... It's important that I remember having this conversation with some of the girls the other day that you think it's the end of the world because you've not played your part, but you're all playing your part. And that's exactly what I had to learn from myself last year was that it might seem at the time like it's really difficult, but it's it really is worth it. And if you keep persevering and pushing, good things come out of it. And I think it's important to recognise that whether you do play or you don't, every single person in this team matters just as much because without them, the training standards wouldn't be as high or everything else that we need to approach every game. So I think it's just a case of making sure that whatever mindset and whatever role you're in, you're, just, you're ready to be there for the team. And I think it's also always nice when you see your, your mates getting an opportunity to showcase what they can do to the world as well. But I can appreciate it's just as hard for the ones that don't. So as long as everyone's together, which we are, we're a really tight-knit group. So it's just as good for everyone who does or doesn't get on the pitch. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Holly. Thanks. Hiya. Um, I'm just wondering, obviously, uh, taking you back to the days of working in the Wellington Street chippy. <laughs> the chippy. Um, has that made you a connoisseur now that you're out on the, the front of Terrigal, you know, up and down the seaside? Have you become a fish and chip connoisseur? Um, and sorry, finish. And up. I was going to also ask, just on a more serious note, the girls have, over the course of the tournament have talked about pinch me moments, you know, going back to those days. Does you know, uh, did you ever dream, that, you know, even even imagine that you would get to this stage, you know, actually being on the pitch and playing for England? You know, is it, is it does it feel like a pinch me moment looking back to those days? Uh, well, firstly, I'd say I'm probably a little bit of a fish and chip snob because I know what a good fish is. Um, don't like the skin on my fish either. Um, and if anyone wanted one battering, I'm sure I'd be able to do a good job for you. But um, I think, yeah, when I look back to say, working in the chippy, doing a shift at 5 a.m., clearing up drunken people's leftover food or alcohol bottles, and I'm now playing in a major tournament, and I think that, for me, is a very much a pinch me moment. And everyone's story is different. Everyone's got their own ways and way in which they've got here, and I think it's quite special because it's really humbling as well that one minute, things like that, you, you are just a normal person, which is what I feel like I am, and we do every day to things. But then you come to a tournament like this and you think, wow, there's millions and millions of eyes watching me in these moments. And I just have to make sure I'm at my best ready because you're always watching us no matter what we do. Um, and I think it's special and it's moments like that that you can really treasure in your career because you know where you've come from and how hard you've worked to get to what you want to achieve. Thanks very much. Yes, we'll go to Neil. Hi, Bethany. I'm just wondering, just going back to the previous question before Holly asked one, um, do you think in a way that the fact you were a good squad member last year might have uh, affected your the decision for Serena to, to actually name you uh, in the squad this summer? Uh, sorry, this winter, whatever we are. Um, do you know what? I think it doesn't cost much to be a good person. I think you could be a good person, you could be a bad person. If Ultimately, if you're good enough to be on the pitch, I think you'd be picked also... It makes a difference if you're a good person because it makes a much more nicer environment. But I'd, I think ultimately it's down to your playing on the pitch. And I think, like I said, it wasn't just luck that I got here. I didn't just get picked because I'm a good person. I got picked because I fought hard from place to be on that plane. And I showed that with game time I was able to score goals. So for me, it's a case of if, you can, if I can show you I can do it, then I deserve to be here. Thanks, Neil.
Uh, two final questions. We'll go to Rob and then we'll finish in the middle of the room. Hi, um, good luck for the game. Thank um, you. You reflected on your journey a bit there. Um, this is quite a landmark World Cup because players are getting this guaranteed pay from FIFA and um, you know, just reaching the quarterfinals for you and the Colombians, it's like a minimum £70,000. Do you recognise sort of that progress? Do you sort of see how that, and it could be life-changing for so many uh, players given the sort of struggles that, you know, you've seen sort of getting the income into the game growing up? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, I think the fact that FIFA put these sanctions in place to make sure, regardless, even in the group stages, that money was there, especially for teams that probably doesn't have the funding like we're so lucky to have with the FA. And I think it's important that we've continued to push, to push, to grow the women's game and that we're finally starting to see the benefits of that um, for athletes, whether that is through bonuses, through pay, other funding, better facilities, better training pitches. And I think that's just part and parcel of the game. The more the game grows and becomes a bigger, wider spread for the female game that we deserve to be paid at least a reasonable amount for that. I don't think it's unacceptable to be asking for such thing. Um, but I think, like you say, for countries that I know, like with Jamaica, they had to set up a GoFundMe to get you. And I think it's sad when we're in this day and age where teams are still having to do that. However, it's also amazing to know that players are going to be able to leave this tournament knowing that they've been left with a good bonus at the end of it. Thanks, Rob. Go to the middle of the room. Um, Sorry. Hi, Bethany. Okay, so I'll just take you back to the game against Nigeria. And I'm wondering, um, you know, were there surprising moments with the way the team performed, uh, the performance of the Nigerian team against England that day? And are there lessons you're taking from that going into the game against Colombia? Yeah, I think you get lessons from every game. I thought um, tactically and technically they put out a very good performance. I don't think... They looked out of place at all. I thought they, well, they gave us a great fight. They pushed us all the way to the wire. Um, so I think it's important to remember that even teams that you think that you're expected to beat can't always be as easy as you think. And I don't think we at any point felt that it was going to be an easy game. I think that their very direct style of play causes problems at times, but we were able to deal with that even when we were down to 10. And it was a case of pretty much defending for your lives for a lot of the game but ultimately we got through that and then we showed our resilience as a group and togetherness as a team to go on into that penalty shootout and get the job done so I'm just very thankful that the team were able to stick together and yeah into the next round thanks ever so much everyone thank you thanks okay yeah thank you everyone cheers